This video is packed with tons of DIY spring decor you're going to absolutely love. Hey everyone, welcome back to DIY Beauty on Purpose. My name is Leonep and let's get started. I am going to take three of these Target dollar spot windows and I am going to remove all the hardware as well as the plastic backing that they each have. I am then going to put them together or join them together using hot glue and staples and I'm making sure that I am stapling them on the back of them. I am now going to start painting them. I am going to paint the middle cross, you know, the, the cross section. And I am going to paint them using Waverly chalk paint in the ink. And then all the around rim is going to be white. And I am going to use Rust-Oleum chalk paint in the linen white. And I'm only going to do two coats, I'm sorry, one coat of each. Once everything was dry, I am now going to take these florals from the Dollar Tree. Aren't they beautiful? I love these. I'm going to just cut all the little branches off of it and I'm going to join them together using some uh, uh, nautical rope from the Dollar Tree, wrap it around and then hot glue it to the bottom of the window. I am now going to take this welcome, uh, I think it's like a galvanized sign from Target Dollar Spot, and I'm just going to hot glue it towards the bottom, go right above the flower arrangement, and then I am going to put back one of the little claw hook hanging thingies <laughs> um, that it originally had, just one, it's not too heavy, and um, that way I can hang it if I want it, or I can also place it on anywhere, like on a mantle anywhere but look how beautiful it looks with just a few dollars you have a custom little farmhouse style sign that i absolutely love i'm going to start using eight painter sticks these are the regular size ones i get these in bulk on amazon but you can certainly get them at the hardware store you can get i think it's like a little pack of like maybe six or five of them for 98 cents very very inexpensive so i'm going to line up eight of them next to each other but i'm going to alternate that little curved part one going up one going down that way they're not all on one side and then I am going to take two other ones and I am going to measure and cut so that they fit perfectly going across each or across the painter sticks. And I'm going to hot glue them one on the top and one at the bottom. Say 
take me on a treasure hunt. Next, I am going to take this leftover canvas, uh, like the fabric that's on the canvas, and I am going to cut off the parts where it's all broken and folded. And now I am going to cut shapes of leaves. There is no right or wrong way, guys. Seriously, you just I just want to cut them to where they have the shape of a leaf. And I'm going to cut right about, I would say 10 or 12, give or take. And I'm going to cut some larger ones than other ones. Just you when you said that beauty lives in me too. Once I have them cut, I am now going to make a slit right on the bottom of the leaf. I'm going to try, when you cut them, try to leave one end flat instead of pointy. So once you cut a slit, then you're just going to crisscross them just like that and hot glue them so that they have like, so they're a little bit lifted. And you're going to do that to all of them. Now I am going to kind of fold them back. So you see what I'm doing? Just kind of bring the top a little bit back so they sit flush with the board. And I am going to here just kind of dry fit the larger ones. So I'm going to start with the larger ones and move up to the smaller ones. And I'm going to start with four and then, oh, I'm sorry, not four, five, and then move on to four and then move on to three, that kind of thing. Taking the leftover pieces of canvas, I'm just going to cut a circle to fit right in the center of the flower, hot glue it in the center, and then I'm just going to add some uh, nautical rope to the back so that we can hang it, and that's it. How simple, how easy, and it took me, I want to say, maybe about six, seven minutes, and that's just because I had a couple uh, mishaps with glue, <laughs> where it's I got burned and it spilled. Other than that, it really is a quick five-minute DIY. I love the way this one turned out. All right, so for this next DIY, I'm going to take one of these little tea candle glass uh, like holder and then a uh, one of those very almost like v-shaped candles they are beautiful i have never found these or saw these at dollar tree recently saw them and i grabbed a couple and i'm gonna flip over the tea candle uh, holder and i'm going to add some e6000 and hot glue and then hot glue it to the bottom of the uh of the candle
I am now adding a few little evergreen picks, not evergreen. These are like frosted, almost like boxwood um, picks. I got several of them at the Dollar General for a dollar. You see the little bundle there. And I'm just going to take a couple of the little branches and hot glue them to the bottom or underneath the candle. And I'm also going to add a little tiny white flower from some flowers that I don't even know where they came from, but they were there. <laughs> and I think these this candle um, holder turned out absolutely adorable adorable and it could be added to any style of decor. All right, for this next DIY, I am going to take this uh, canvas, but this one is on like the flat ones, the real thin ones. I'm just gonna need one of them and I'm not gonna do anything to it, but I am going to take this butterfly welcome sign that I have had since the summer and I never used it. I am going to remove the butterfly and save the welcome for another oh, DIY. Once I have the butterfly, um, or I took out the top butterfly, as you saw, I'm going to keep this one just like is. I'm just going to kind of fold the leaves, or not the leaves, the <laughs> wings, a little bit upward, so that way it has like a 3D effect. And I'm going to hot glue it to the bottom right of the canvas. To the remaining part of the butterfly, I'm going to remove the little sticks that were in the back and I am going to give it two coats of Rust-Oleum chalk paint in the charcoal tone. And again, to speed up the process, I am going to use my heat gun to dry it in between coats. Once it was dry, I am now going to fold the wings again, just a little upward to, so that they have more of a 3D effect and hot glue that top butterfly to the bottom one. I am now going to take this Dollar Tree decal and I am going to just use the bottom floral section and I am going to place them kind of like if they're coming right from behind the butterfly going upwards and I'm going to use both of them. And to finish things off, I'm just going to add more nautical rope to the back of this one so that we can hang it as well. And that's it for this one. Such an easy one. I love the black and white look and it's so beautiful. Follow me. 
For this next DIY, I am going to take this piece of board. This was part of a longer piece and I just cut a piece about 18 inches long and I'm just gonna dry brush some Rust-Oleum chalk pen in the linen white. And I'm going to use this decal from the Dollar Tree with this beautiful, it says, do not worry about anything, instead pray about everything. It's one of my favorite scriptures, and I think the design is absolutely beautiful. So basically, the way you work these decals is you just take off like a sticker and place them like a sticker. <laughs> you just want to make sure that whatever board you're working on, you know for sure is going to fit it. That way, you know, it's just a lot easier. Once you have everything placed where you want it, if you do need to move things, some things here and there, you can, and it'll still oh, stick. I am going to place a couple screws right on top. In addition to showing you how you can use these Dollar Tree decals, I am also going to give you several ideas on how you can create the signs, materials to use, how to hang them, and that kind of thing. So this first one, I am going to screw a couple screws three inches in from each side. And then I am going to simply take one of those little like chains that you um, can find at the Dollar Tree there to hang baskets out in the summer. I am going to use one of them, remove the little hook from the end, and then I am going to use that and um, tighten as I can so that it is nice and snug and it will not come off. I use these little chains all the time and I love the way they look. I'm going to now take some florals. These are some florals from a combination of Dollar General as well as some. Um, the pink one is one I got on Amazon, but I'm just going to use a few of them. I'm going to tie them together in the center using some jute twine from Walmart and then hot glue it to the top of the sign right inside where the um, right in the center, right in the middle on the top. And that's it guys, this one was so easy to do and it's beautiful. This design is absolutely stunning. And I think these decals are just so easy to work with. Anyone can do it. All right, so for this next sign, I am going to use another one of those boards. This is part of that same board I used in the first sign. This is just part of the leftover. And it's around the same size, and I'm just going to give it another rough uh, one coat of Rust-Oleum chalk pen and the linen white. And then once again, sanded it down with a 220 grit sandpaper, this time just focusing more on the edges. Once I was done with that, I am now going to take this Dollar Tree decal. It says, let your dreams take flight, which is beautiful. And this, this is going to be a really good example of me just kind of placing it lightly. And then until I have the other one placed in, in place, and that way I can move it as needed. What a beautiful, beautiful color gold tone. And I am using a lot of white because these decals just look great against that white. But I think any of these and any other color, lighter color, I think will look great. Like maybe like a light pink or a baby blue will look very beautiful as well. So now that I have it where I need it to be, I'm just going to press it down. And this and this one, I am going to have these um, 
uh, little eye hooks <laughs> on the board. So I'm just going to screw a screw on the sides, just about a half inch from the top, and then unscrew it back out. That's just to give me a nice hole so that I can screw in the eye hooks. And then I am going to take a small screwdriver to help me out because it does get tight there. And that way it'll be all the way in. And I'll do that on the same side as well, or on the other side as well. I am now going to take some more of that jute twine from Walmart. You can also use the jute twine from Dollar Tree. This is just what I have on hand. Um, Walmart has a larger quantity and it's uh, pretty inexpensive. So I do like to buy it there. I'm just going to thread it through each eye hook and then I'm just going to tie it on the top. And it's going to have like a double jute twine um, hanging rope. And I think it looks super cute. Another beautiful, beautiful design with that Dollar Tree decal. All right, guys, so this next sign, I am going to use this Dollar Tree canvas and I am going to use some foam board from the Dollar Tree as well. I am going to use the canvas here to kind of measure out and be able to know where I want to cut using my X-Acto knife. Basically, what I want to create is a um, kind of like a base and to create a little bit more, a larger sign or give the illusion of a larger sign and also create like a border. So I'm just going to cut it to size and the the Ex the more exact the cut, the better and the nicer the sign is going to look. I'm going to use Waverly Chalk Pen. This is in the Tone Ink. And I'm just going to paint just about one to two inches on each side and let it dry. I am now going to take the canvas. I'm not gonna paint it or anything. I love the tone, the natural tone it had. I'm just gonna place hot glue on all the edges and then hot glue it right on top. I am now going to take this Hello Sunshine decal from the Dollar Tree and once again, just place it evenly um, on the board and that's it for this one. I'm gonna add a small jute twine on the back. So for this next DIY, so simple guys, anyone can make this. I'm going to use these jumbo crafting sticks that I got at Walmart. They come a whole bunch for like, I want to say it was like $3. And I am going to use several here. I am going to take three and then a fourth one, I am going to crisscross, hot gluing them together. That way it'll be nicely secure. And I'm just making sure that the, the stick that is across it actually stays within the three. So I'm making sure that the circle part kind of matches with the top and the bottom. I'm gonna create another one with three and then I'm going to create two of them with just two.
So what I want to create with these little panels now, I am going to create a very farmhouse style floral vase. So I'm going to take this scrap piece of foam board. This is just so that the florals that I add does not go all the way through. And it also acts a little bit more uh, for stability for the vase. So I'm just going to hot glue it just about, I don't know, maybe about an inch and a half from the bottom. Now this one here, some of the craft sticks were a little bowed. So I did have to take a piece of a, another one and just hot glue it on top just to add uh, or to keep them straight. But that's it. I just only had it to add it to that one. And then I am going to hot glue all of the sides, making it a nice sturdy vase. And I'm also going to hot glue all the edges to each other. And that way it kind of brings it all together. Once everything was dry and all together, it's time to give it one pretty heavy coat of Rust-Oleum chalk paint in the linen white. And once the paint was dry, I am now adding some antiquing wax. This is by Waverly in their brown tone. I'm just adding them here and there just to add a little bit of dimension and a distressed look. I am now going to wrap jute twine all around. I want this to look like the jute twine is kind of holding together these, these um, wooden sticks, if that makes sense. So I'm just gonna wrap it around twice and make a very simple knot in the front. And now I'm going to add these grassy florals that I got on Amazon, really inexpensive, and I use them all the time. I love how bright and how versatile they are. And this little vase turned out so adorable. Gosh, I would say this is very close to being my favorite from today, but I'll let you know which one is my favorite at the end. All right, so for this next DIY, I am going to take two of the canvases from the Dollar Tree and remove the canvas from both of them. Once I had the frames all set, I am going to hot glue them together long ways. So I'm going to create like a long uh, frame for this next DIY. Once I have them hot glued, I am going to turn them around and staple them for more stability. And then I am going to give it one coat of Waverly chalk paint in their ink tone. Heading back to what used to be home, passing by those little towns I know so well, stopping for gas and then I'm behind the wheel again. Driving this life a spiritual cleanse where every mile is a new beginning and every friend holds a new end. On the road, don't lose control. I'm speeding fast to chase. 
Once the paint was dry, I am going to add some crafting chicken wire. This is very flexible, a lot easier to work with than, it, than the real chicken wire from the hardware store. And I'm going to staple it in place and then cut the excess so that I have a nice fit to the frame. And then I am going to make sure that anything that is sticking out that would scratch or cut anything or anyone, I'm going to make sure that I fold them inwards and that way they're not sticking out. And then I decided to add this ribbon. This is actually not ribbon. This is actually part of a Dollar Tree hat that I pulled apart several months ago for DIYs that I did then. And um, I'm just going to have whatever I have left over. I'm just going to wrap it or hot glue it <laughs> to the front of the frame. This will give it just uh, some texture that I just kind of wanted it to have. And um, yeah, I'm just going to hot glue it. And then I'm going to paint the ribbon black as well. And now it's time to add some florals. I'm just going to make a little swag here for the top of the frame using Dollar General florals as well as some Dollar Tree frosted grassy picks. And I'm going to secure it in the middle with some jute twine, wrap it around, secure it with hot glue, and then I'm just gonna hot glue it to the top of the frame. And that way it just adds a very, I don't know, maybe farmhouse, modern farmhouse look to it. I really love the way this turned out. It's perfect place to add pictures. I will be adding some mini clothespins to it. You can put notes on here. I just think it's perfect for a small little wall area that may be needing some wall decor. DIY, I'm going to take this um, kind of like a framed decor and I thought it was a shadow box, but it actually isn't. So I have gloves on because at first I thought that nail polish remover would remove the decal that is already on there, but it did not. <laughs> but I wanted to leave it because this is how DIYing is. You try things, sometimes it doesn't work out. It's okay. I, after I figured out, which was quickly, that it wasn't going to work out, I then decided to remove the glass completely. I could be wrapped around your arms instead of being lonely. We could be gazing at the stars, but now it feels just like I wandered off into a room and closed the door behind me. I never gave the key to you. I then took this scrap paper that I got, I believe it was at Michael's. It, it's part of this like huge book of um, craft paper. And I am going to use the glass to trace it and cut an exact size. Using hot glue, I'm just going to hot glue it to the top and then place it right back into the frame and hot glue the, the glass onto the frame, kind of like the way it was originally.
Sometimes I just don't know what to do. It should have been you. These leaves I actually had left over from my previous project that I did and I just didn't like didn't throw them away because I just thought they were beautiful. The texture is beautiful and I just loved them. So I'm going to use three of them and I hot glue them to the bottom right corner of the frame. I am not going to take one of these peonies that I am absolutely obsessed with. I get them on Amazon. They're not expensive and I just love having them on hand because, well, because I just love them. I'm going to grab one, cut it all the way to the, um, like to the top of the flower, I guess, or the bottom of the flower and just hot glue it right in the center of the leaves. I am not going to take this Dollar Tree decal. It is with Ephesians 4-2 scripture, but I'm only going to use the be loving portion of it. And I'm going to just place it right where I see fit in that open area of the frame. I ended up removing the B, the B-E, because you couldn't see it. You couldn't see it because it was just too close to the color of the background. I should have like maybe grabbed a different background paper but it is what it is so I just cut that off and then we'll be done with this one another beautiful very chic looking decor and so quick and easy to make For this next DIY, I am going to take this Target Dollar Spot heart. It is actually a chalkboard. It also came with that cute little key. I'm not using on this DIY, but I will keep it for a future DIY. And then I remove the sticker once again using my heat gun. Once again, I'm going to use one of those peonies as well as these Dollar General. Oh, what are these? I forget what they're called, but you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> they're beautiful. They actually have like a frosted kind of look to them. I'm going to snip all the branches off of it. And then I am going to take a pipe. You see it right there in the corner. It's like a pipe holder. And once I have them all scrunched up and in the style that I want it, I am going to take that pipe holder and I am going to place it right over all the stems, all the florals, and secure it in place with a couple of screws. And now using chalk, I am going to write the word te amo, which means I love you in Spanish. And we are done. And I think this one turned out again, so chic, so beautiful and such a quick DIY. Love it. DIY is very simple. Actually, a lot of these DIYs today are so, so easy and so simple. I thrifted this quite a while ago and I just never knew what to do with it. I used it once for fruit and then I just didn't know what else to do with it. So today I am going to give it new life. I gave it a good scrub because it was a little dingy. Once it was dry, I am going to place a piece of 
painter's tape right across it. And then I'm going to give it three coats over sodium chalk paint in the linen white on the top as well as the bottom. I am going to remove the tape, which is usually my favorite part. <laughs> and then I am going to lightly distress the edge of the bowl just to get a little bit more dimension. And then once that's done, guys, we're done. I mean, I told you it was easy. This plate took a whole new look and I absolutely love the way it turned out. I styled it very chic and I think it turned out super, super cute. very easy thrift flip here i thrifted this candle holder actually it was a set of three i've already made over two of them um, in previous videos but for this one i want to give it a whole different look i'm going to give it one coat of this rustoleum uh, metallic paint in the gold tone Once it was dry, it was time to start putting on the decor. I'm going to place this Dollar Tree pillar candle and these Dollar Tree pink florals. And I'm just going to start hot gluing them right on the side of the candle onto the candle holder. And I'm going to add some of the green leaves as well to add a little bit more color and fullness. And once that's done, guys, we're done. I mean, again, it's such an easy, easy DIY. But what a beautiful just look this candle holder now has very chic very glam kind of like and i just love the way it turned out All right, guys, if you have an Instagram account, I would love to connect with you there. I post every single day video clips, behind the scenes, hauls, inspirational quotes, all kinds of stuff. So if you have an account, check out my link in the description box. Again, I would love to connect with you there as well. All right, guys, so for this one, I'm a little nervous because this is completely, completely different from anything I have ever seen, or at least that I have seen. All right, so I got these um, taper candle holders. They're super cute, very vintage-like at the thrift store. I give them a good scrub, and I'm just going to dry them here. But I'm not going to put taper candles on all of them. I'm only going to put a taper candle on the small one because I just, I'm not much of a taper candle person. I never have been. 
I don't know why I just not a fan of them. However, I am going to turn these into small little thin flower vases, flower holders. I know I'm crazy, right? <laughs> but just, just follow me here for a minute. So I am going to place some of this floral foam right inside the top hole. Once I have it where I want it, I'm going to start cutting some of these florals that I got at Target Dollar Spot very recently. I'm just going to start placing the longer ones on the taller um, candle holder. And I did add some hot glue here and there to hold them because there's not much room for the uh, flowers to go into. So I wanted to make sure there was nicely secure. Now for the medium sized one, I used some boxwood um, to place on there because it's smaller and it kind of fits the size of the candle holder. Um, and again, I added some hot glue on both of them. And then I did add some moss to kind of cover the foam and hot glued it to the base of both of them. Now on the small one, I did add a taper candle just because that way it just kind of brings everything together. And these taper candles are from the Dollar Tree. Alright guys, so I'm about to show you here how these turned out and I think I love them. I don't know what it is about them. It may be absolutely crazy. You may think it's like absolutely insane. <laughs> I just think it looks super beautiful. But let me know in the comments if you think it's a no-no or if you think it's a go. So for this next DIY, I'm going to take this thrifted um, wreath. I think it's absolutely stunning. I love how thick the grapevine is. I love how rustic it looks. And I'm going to give it a very natural floor arrangement here. I'm going to do it on the um, right side of the wreath. And I'm going to use some boxwood as well as more of those pink flowers from the Dollar Tree. Now, the way I want to arrange these florals is I want it to look very natural and almost like it's wildly growing inside this wreath. I don't know if that makes sense, but I'm just going to start placing it where it looks, again, just like wildflowers growing out of the grapevine wreath. And I want it to look very bushy almost. I hope that makes sense. But I think once you start seeing how it's coming along, I think it'll start making sense. around your arms instead of being lonely we could be gazing at the stars but now it feels just like i wandered off into a room and closed the door behind me i never gave the key to you even though i wanted to i should be trying something new but now my body's aching i'm tired of dwelling in the dark it's just that my heart can't take it so we're just about done putting in the florals do you see what i'm talking about i want it to look very bushy i want it to look like these again these flowers were just growing wild and um within the wreath and we're going to take this leftover welcome little sign it used to have a windmill i recently used the windmill on another diy but i'm going to use the welcome portion of it and i am going to place it right in the center of the floral arrangement I'm going to secure it with some flexible wire and once that's in guys we're done with this one Yeah. 
a wreath form it's like a circle form that i got at the target dollar spot it's wooden and i am going to give it one coat of rustoleum chalk pen in the linen white and it's going to be kind of like dry brushed i still want to see a little bit of the darker tones and underneath but i want it to be mostly white Once it was dry, I am going to lightly, very lightly distress the edges as well as some of the darker areas just to bring out a little bit more of that darker tone. Once I had it where I wanted it, I am now going to use one of these wreath forms, again from the Target Dollar Spot. It's only $3 as well and I just think it's so beautiful. I am going to uh, place it right on top. I'm just going to drill a or screw in a screw on the top secure it to the wood form and then spread out the little branches I am now going to take some Spanish moss that I get at the Dollar Tree and I'm just going to grab enough where I can make a little kind of like um, a bird's nest. So I'm going to make it to where it kind of or form it to look like a little bird's nest and then I'm going to hot glue it to the bottom left of the reef form. I am now going to take some burlap ribbon from burlapfabric.com and I am going to loop it about four times. I want to have four loops. I am then going to fold in the middle, going down, and then fold the edges to the sides. I'll do it again, middle down, and then the edges to the sides. That way I can have a nicely um, simple bow and I'm just going to use some jute twine to tie in the middle, fluff it up a little bit, and then hot glue it to the top of the wreath form. I picked these three colors because I want to keep them in the neutral tone, but if you, you know, want to recreate something like this, you can certainly use whatever color, bright colors, Easter and spring is just one of those times where you can use whatever colors you want. So the way this clay works is just like any regular clay, you just want to make sure that you, um, you know, press it, just you know, soften it up a little bit. Once I had it where I wanted, now I'm just going to shape an egg or what I think an egg, you know, kind of like an egg. And I'll do the same thing with the white and the brown tone. So now it's time to bake it. You will put it at 325 degrees Fahrenheit and then bake it for about 15 to 30 minutes. I chose 30 because these are on the thicker side. If it's something thinner, I definitely recommend maybe starting at 15 and go from there. I'm just gonna place it in a baking pan and place it in the oven again for 30 minutes. 
once they were done, they look so cute. <laughs> I did let them um, cool down just a bit to make sure that I can touch them. And I'm just going to hot glue them to the little bird's nest there. And that's it, guys. This one turned out so cute. It's one of those that you can use for Easter, spring, really in summer. Um, so versatile. Very, very cute. Next DIY, I am going to use these towels. They're like kitchen towels that I got, again, at the Target Dollar Spot. They were $5, so they were a little bit more than what I like to spend, but man, they're so beautiful and such good quality. It comes with these two, but I am going to use the one with like the flower shapes kind of for this next DIY. But for the next one, or in a little bit, you'll see the other towel used as well. I'm going to grab a bowl here um, just to kind of use as a guide. This is an Artisa fabric marker. Guys, these are amazing. Again, I'm going to have all of these supplies from Artisa linked down in the description box. So I'm just going to trace the bowl and then I am going to hand draw what I think will look like bunny ears because we're going to create a little bunny ear. So I don't know if I mastered this. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if this really looked like a bunny at the end, but I think it did. I hope it did. I wish I would have done the ears a little thicker. That's the only thing I would have done. Just a little wider. Other than that, I think it turned out super cute. So once I have the bunny kind of where I want it, I am going to cut it, but I am going to leave about a quarter of an inch outside of, or I'm going to cut a quarter of an inch outside of the line. All right, so now it's time to hot glue the edges. I'm still going to, I'm going to hot glue it as you can see when it's still inside out. Just going to start with the edges. Once I have it to about halfway down the circle, I'm going to stop and I am going to then turn it inside in or outside in <laughs> and then start filling it with some pillow stuffing. And that way we'll have a, um, what I think was a bunny. We'll see. All right, so I'm just here stuffing, as you can see. Now, I wish the ears, like I said, I should have done it a little bit thicker. But in the end, I think it does look like a bunny. You'll see. Um, so in the circle, basically what I really want, there's two things. I want to make sure that the ears stay up. So I want to make sure that there's enough stuffing in there to make sure that the ears stay nicely up. And then in the circle portion, so like the head portion, I want to make sure that I have enough stuffing where it is a nice circle. So making sure that I press out on the edges 
And um, now on the bottom, I'm going to leave a little bit flat because I want it to, I'm going to hot glue it to a wood slice and I want to make sure that it um, is not too rounded on the bottom. I am now going to take one of these Artisas large wood slices. They sent me these and gosh, I love them. I have used them in several of my DIYs and I just, they're just so good quality guys. Again, I'm going to have these linked down in the description box. So I'm just going to add some hot glue on the top rim and then I'm just going to place the bunny head right on top. And I'm also going to add a little bit more hot glue on the edges and kind of fold down a little bit because I want the head to stay up. All right, now I'm gonna take this foam ball from the Dollar Tree and I'm just gonna cut about maybe one fourth of the bottom. And once I cut a piece off of it, I'm just going to kind of flatten it out a little bit. You're gonna see me there flatten it and out, just pushing it down on the table to make sure it's nice and flat. We're just gonna make the little bunny tail. So once I have that where I want it, I'm gonna take some of this leftover dusting mop from the Dollar Tree and I'm just gonna hot glue it until it's covered, but leaving the back bare. I'm going to trim the excess fur there and then I'm just going to hot glue it to the bottom of the wood slice and then it's going to look like a little bunny. I think it turned out super adorable, so neutral, very kind of like farmhouse chic kind of look and I really love the way that looked and I it's one of my favorite today. For this next DIY, I am going to take this Dollar Tree home sign, remove the tin heart, and then I am going to give everything just about two coats, maybe about two and a half coats of Rust-Oleum Chalk Paint in the linen white. The reason why I'm not sure is because I'm dry brushing it. So I'm just going very lightly because I do, want, do not want to get any paint on the, like the ridges in the middle. I want to keep those so that it looks like it's planked. So you're going to see me here. It's going to be very light. I'm going to just dry brush. And I think I did about two and a half here and there, wherever it was needed until I had enough coverage where it looked how I wanted it to look like. So once that was drying, I am now going to take these Dollar Tree carrots and some of these pipe cleaners from Artisa. Boy, do they have a selection of these guys. They sent me a humongous packet. It has every color in the rainbow in there. But today we're keeping it neutral. So I'm just going to use some brown, beige, and white. And I'm just going to wrap these around each carrot. So one carrot's going to be brown. The other one's going to be about a, like a light brown or beige. And the other one's going to be white. I'm going to hot glue as needed as I make my way down to the bottom of the carrot. Red on a sunny day in late July and everything. 
thing turned upside down. I almost lost track of time as weeks went by. I couldn't get him off my mind. I told him I want that great love, like standing in the middle of a bonfire. You don't know how you got there, but you hold tight, knowing that you can't get burned. Just tell me how we lost track of everything but each other. I honestly don't know. Then tell me how we messed up. I should have done this before I wrapped it, but it worked out okay. I removed the little greenery part of the carrot that it came with, and I'm going to replace it with these greenery, grassy, faux, kind of like floral. I get these on Amazon. I always have it on, my, on hand because I really love the way they look, and I'm just going to press it right down the carrot. That way it just has a more realistic and just more of a wow factor for these carrots. And then I repeat the same thing for the next two carrots. I did use my Cricut to cut the phrase Happy Easter. And I'm going to, um, as you can see here, remove the X's vinyl. And then I'm going to transfer it right onto the center of the sign. Artisa also sent me this kit of um, like exacto knives. They are awesome. I use them all the time. And what I'm going to use them for here is I am going to make a little cut right where the vinyl kind of overlaps the crease for the planked um, base or the planked sign. And then I'm just going to fold the other side in. You're going to see here, right here. So I'm going to make a slit. It's a cut. And then I'm just going to fold the excess right down there and that way it just looks a little bit more finished and a little bit more natural all right so now i'm going to hot glue the carrots to the bottom of the sign and just kind of kind of like on an angle, I guess. And then I'm going to add some more of that um, burlap ribbon from burlapfabric.com to the top of the sign so that it can be hung if we'd like to. And then we'll be done with this one, guys. Another beautiful one. So simple and just neutral. I just love these colors. Um, you know, I, I, I do like some color here and there, but I always tend to go with my neutrals. It really makes me happy. <laughs> so, but I love the way this one turned out. I'm going to take the other tea towel here that was left over and I'm just going to fold it in half and towards the bottom of the what will be a pillow I use my Cricut to design the phrase he I'm is risen you. I'm going to use the gold tone and I'm just going to start stenciling the phrase on the bottom and then let it dry around your arms instead of being lonely we could be gazing at the stars but now it feels just like i wandered off into a room and closed the door behind me i never gave the key to you even though i wanted to once i was done i like to remove it while the paint is still dry so i'm going to remove it then let it air dry now remember guys Again, all of these Artisa products will be linked down in the description box. I should be trying something new, but now my body's aching. I'm tired. 
tired of dwelling in the dark It's just that my heart can't take it I didn't know what it cost me when I let you go I feel alone all right, so now that the paint is dry, it's time to get the pillow um, glued. You can sew it if you'd like, but to me, any decorative pillow that is only going to be seasonal, not get a lot of use, hot glue to me is plenty sufficient. I'm going to hot glue the two sides first. And as you can see, this one I'm doing a little different. I'm hot gluing, leaving that little edge there. I just like the way that look. I'm going to do that on both sides, and then I'm going to stuff it with more, pi more pillow stuffing and then hot glue the part where it has the little tassels making sure that the tassels are not glued in <laughs> DIY, I am going to take this piece of scrap board that I had in the garage. You've probably seen me using several. They all came from the same piece. I just cut them in different pieces and sizes. Um, this one, I'm just going to give it one pretty heavy coat of Rust-Oleum chalk paint in the linen white. And then once it was dry, I distressed it pretty heavily using a 220 grit sandpaper along with my electric sander. I do make sure that I wipe it down very, very well because it, it, the dust is so fine when you're um, sanding that, um, for example, for this decal that I'm using from Dollar Tree, um, it just wouldn't stick right. So just make sure it's nicely dusted. This decal I got very recently at the Dollar Tree and I thought it was beautiful. I'm only gonna use the part where it says bloom from within, but I think the other portion is very pretty as well. But for the size of the board, I just thought it would be very appropriate to use just the wording. So I'm just going to place it towards the top a little bit on the tilted side. And then I'm going to take these, um, I think these are lavender. I honestly don't know where I got them. <laughs> I don't remember. I've had them for a while. Um, maybe Dollar General? I'm not sure. But they're beautiful and I have several bundles of them. So I thought it'd be super cute and appropriate for the sign. I'm going to join them together using some nautical rope from the Dollar Tree and then attach it to the bottom with hot glue and that's it for this one super simple super cute perfect for spring coming up and how easy and so inexpensive say take me on a treasure hunt i long for something new have you heard the fairies when they sing and dance she was me every night when I close my eyes I see you. I am going to use this round wood plank from the Target dollar spot I'm going to remove the jute twine that came with it but we're going to replace it back on at the end here now I'm going to measure three inches from the top and three inches from the bottom and tape it because we're going to be painting it using Waverly chalk paint and the ink and I gave it one coat. I 
like your fire is gone across your face it is written across your face if you want to talk i'm right here not gonna leave your side just feel free to open up when the moment's right across your face it is written across your face after removing the tape I am going to then place more tape. This time I'm going to leave about a half inch from the line where the black ends. And I am going to also cover the black that way it won't get ruined. Using Waverly Antiquing Wax, I am going to just brush on one coat and then wipe off the excess to give it a little bit more of an antique brownish look. I am now going to take this stencil that says farmhouse. I have had this for such a long time. I honestly don't know where I got it, <laughs> but um, I love using these stencils and it's such a great idea for someone who does not have a cutting machine and it's something that you can reuse project after project like I have. I'm gonna use the Waverly ink chalk paint and I am going to just stenciling it. I'm not looking for perfection. I want it to have a little bit of a distressed look and I am using a sponge brush. Once I removed the stencil, I am now just going to replace the chew twine on the top. And then using the same white florals from earlier, I am going to create a little swag for the top portion. I'm going to join them together using chew twine and then hot glue it to the top. And we're just about done with this one. And I think, again, this one turned out so beautiful. I just love the simplicity of these projects. I love that they're just so fresh, so farmhouse, but yet very elegant. And I really love the way this one turned out as well. All right, so for this DIY, I am going to take three Dollar Tree plastic little plates and some Dollar Tree nautical rope. And I believe I used about three and a half ropes. I'm just going to start by hot gluing and rolling it from the middle to the outside. So starting in the center in the middle and working my way to the outside, adding hot glue with every turn. Towards the end, once I reached the very, very thin part of the plate, like the rim, I just added a little bit of hot glue in between the rim and the rope, and the rope actually stuck really well. 
and I did the same thing on all three plates. Now, you can skip this as you want. <laughs> I mean, seriously, I think they look beautiful just as they are. However, I wanted to add a little bit of color, so I am going to dry brush, a pretty heavy dry brush, um, each plate. One with Rust-Oleum chalk paint in the lean and white, the other one with Rust-Oleum milk paint in the, oh, is it? I forget the name, but I'm going to have them down in, in the description box. And then the other one is with Rust-Oleum chalk paint in the pale pink. And we're just about done with these guys. I literally just let them dry. I added command hooks, not the hooks, but the ones that are like Velcro to each of the back. And that's what they look like. I think they turned out absolutely stunning. And what's beautiful is you can really customize this to whatever color you want. They could be all white. They could be natural with some colors, whatever you'd like. And I think they turned out so cute. All right, for this DIY, I am going to take this uh, round wooden, wood, uh, not sure what it is. <laughs> it looks like an ornament, but it was in their craft section. I removed a little jute twine from it, and now I'm going to take this dowel that I got at Walmart, and I am going to just give it at the end a 45 degree angle, just like you see there. And then I am going to measure three inches, and then I am going to cut it straight. And I'm going to do this three times using my miter box. I am now going to paint with Rust-Oleum chalk paint in the linen white, just one coat only on the rim portion of the circle. I am going to use this fabric from Walmart and I am going to trace the circle right on top, cut it, and then I am going to glue it using some glued stick. I did trim a little bit of the excess fabric using my rotary cutter. I am not going to just mark what I think it's the middle, and I think I did a good job, but you can always measure. I just like to eye things out sometimes. Now using hot glue as well as wood glue, I am going to start um, gluing each little leg onto the bottom. So the 45 degree angle is just gonna make it angled. Now I'm also going to brad nail it so that it's a little bit more secure. I'm gonna do this same thing with the other two legs. Smile, 
after I brad nail this last leg, it's basically done. Now it's just time to put a very simple vase on top with a flower. It could be a decor riser, it could be a flower vase riser, or it could just be whatever you want it to be. I just think it turned out super, super cute. I am going to use this Dollar Tree pizza pan and I'm going to give it three coats of Rust-Oleum chalk pan in the linen white. Using a sponge stenciling brush, I am going to distress the edges using Waverly ink uh, chalk paint. I am not going to take these Dollar Tree flowers and I am going to pull them out. I'm going to need six of them and I'm going to cut the stem as close as possible to the base of the flower. I am then going to use the Dollar Tree magnets and I'm going to need only six of them. Then I am going to hot glue each flower onto each magnet. Because I'm running out of Mod Podge, I decided to just take it outside and spray it with this Rust-Oleum Clear Matte Top Coat. And it's freezing, guys. So I wasn't sure if it was going to work, but it did. It dried pretty quickly, actually, and it dried very well. Using these two faux fern bundles, I am going to join them together as well as some flowers from the Dollar Tree using jute twine and hot glue them to the top of the pizza pan. And now it's time to add the beautiful little magnet flowers. And that's it guys. Now we have a beautiful note or picture holder that I think looks super cute even with no pictures on it. So moving along, this next DIY, I am going to use three of these buckets from the Dollar Tree and two of these extra large painting stirring sticks. At first, I thought I can just freehand it here, but then I took a ruler from the Dollar Tree and used it as a guide so that I know how much um, width to live in the middle. And I'm just going to staple each bucket, one in each end, the top and the bottom, and then the other one right in the center. I 
I am now going to take these little chalkboard tags from the Dollar Tree, remove the clothespin, and then using a chalkboard or a chalk marker from Dollar Tree, I am going to write the words oregano, basil, and parsley. And guys, <laughs> my handwriting is awful. So don't mind then writing, okay? Just imagine it looks nice and pretty. Um, and then hot glue it to the front of each bucket. I'm going to hot glue some nautical rope to the back so it can be hung. And that's it. This one is done and it's super cute. Now, I do not have any basil or oregano or uh, parsley, but I am going to just put some boxwood because I think it looks super cute. But I think it's, it would look gorgeous. Even if it didn't say that in the front of each bucket, it could say whatever else you'd like. For this next DIY, I am going to take this flower garden bucket from the Dollar Tree and I'm going to give it two brushes or two coats of dry brushed chalk paint from Rust-Oleum in the linen white. I am now going to distress it just a little bit, adding as if it has been rusted through the months. So I'm going to use some Waverly Antiquing Wax and a stenciling bristle brush. And I'm going to start just dabbing to the bot on the bottom rim and then a little bit brushing it, dry brushing it on the rest of the bucket. I am now going to take this drop cloth that I have used over and over again and I'm going to cut a piece. I want to say it's about 12 inches. It's about a foot wide and um, I am going to fold. We see with that rim on the left bottom corner, it already has that rim there. It was already, that you know, that fold was already there. So I'm just going to fold it right on that same fold and hot glue it creating a nice rim. All right, so now I am going to place it inside and start hot gluing the um, hemmed side onto the rim, making sure that it is um, about the same size in all sides. Now I did cut it way too short. You're gonna see that I'm about 
probably about two inches away from um, uh, the fabric touching each other. So I just ended up having to add a little extra fabric at the end, but no big deal. It turned out really well. And I just have that towards the back of the floral arrangement. And then I'm just going to add some full uh, boxwood to this one as well. And oh my gosh, this is one of my favorite today. I love the way this one turned out. It's very rustic, but very farmhouse, very fresh looking. Really love the way it turned out. For this next DIY, I am going to take four rulers from the Dollar Tree and remove the black ruler portion of them. Taking this little chalkboard sign from the Dollar Tree, I'm going to remove the back of it. And now I'm going to take the rulers and I'm just going to start marking. So I am going to mark four of them to be the same width as the inside portion of the like top to bottom of the board. And then I'm going to do four this side, the horizontal way and mark. Now you can use your miter box if you have one. This time I decided to use my miter saw. So I went outside in the garage and made the cuts. Once they were cut, now I'm just going to start hot gluing, creating a box on the back of it. It really is all you need. You could use some wood glue if you'd like, but all I really needed was the hot glue and it was actually sufficient. So I'm going to hot glue two on each side of the smaller ones and then two on the bottom and two on the back of the larger ones. I have two extra smaller ones and I decided to just place them right on the back of the board. That way it just adds a little bit more stability and I did that on the other side. Then using the chalk marker from the Dollar Tree, I decided to write love grows here. Again, don't mind the handwriting. <laughs> um, and then added some grassy faux florals and I think it turned out so cute.
for this next DIY, I'm going to take this canvas sign from the Dollar Tree. And what I like about this canvas is that although Dollar Tree carries plain canvases, this one is square instead of rectangle, and I really like that. I'm going to give it two coats over Stolen Chalk Paint and the Linen White, and I'm going to use a technique that I use quite often, but I hardly ever explain it. Uh, each coat I'm going to do in different directions. So this one I am going to use this side to side like horizontal and then I'm once it's dry I am going to then do the second coat in the opposite direction that will give it a little bit of a texture to it and I really love that texture so as you're painting you don't have to go in the direction just keep painting once it's fully covered before it dries just then make sure that you brush from side to side on one direction so I'm just showing you here I'm using my heat gun to dry it and now I'm adding the second coat and as you can see I'm going on the opposite direction Now I'm going to use one of these grapevine wreaths that I get on Amazon, but I do know that Dollar Tree carries them. I just have several of these on hand because I get them in a big box. And I'm also going to take these florals from Dollar Tree. I hot glued the grapevine wreath onto the canvas, and I'm going to add a couple of these, one going up, one going down. I didn't hot glue them. I just basically stuck it right in there. I then took some ribbon from the Dollar Tree and some burlap ribbon and I am going to make very simple bows and hot glue it in between the flowers. We're just about done with this one and this one turned out so beautiful again one of those that you can really customize and really change up the flowers if you want them white or pink or whatever you want or maybe even add more florals i tend to like my wreaths on the simple side which is why i left it as is but really it can be done whichever way you want Alright, so for this next DIY, I am going to take this alphabet puzzle from the Dollar Tree and I am going to remove the letters, but we're not going to get rid of them because we are going to use them here in a little bit. I'm going to paint the back of it with two coats over Stolium Chalk Paint and the Linen White. I am now going to take 10 of the letters and I'm going to flip them um, to its back and I am going to paint five of them white and five of them black using the Waverly ink chalk paint and then for the white the Rust-Oleum chalk paint and the linen white. I am going to distress dry brushing the edges of the white ones just a little bit just to give them a little bit of a dimension and contrast from the white board. Now to the back of it because it has all these colors and the where the letters were I'm just going to use some glue stick and I'm just going to glue some felt fabric from the Dollar Tree in the black.
now I'm going to start setting up these little, what used to be letters, but now they're petals for flowers. And I am going to just start placing them where I think they're going to look cute. I'm going to place four for one flower. And then the one of them on the opposite color is going to go right in the center. And I'm just going to hot glue them in place. Using an Artisa marker, I am going to draw the stems and some leaves. Using this ribbon from Michaels, I am going to make another very simple multiple strand bow and hot glue it to the bottom of the flower stems. Using this decal from the Dollar Tree, I already had used a little portion of it, but what's remaining of it I am going to use for this one. And I'm going to cut here and there as I need to make sure that it fits on my small sign. And I'm just going to place it on the board around the flowers. And we are just about done with this one, guys. What a beautiful little sign. I love black and white, but I just love the way it turned out. And guys, this is seriously an alphabet board. <laughs> what, a, what a beautiful way to use it. And I just think it turned out super cute. this beautiful cutting board literally it was like this <laughs> i saw it from far and i rushed to it to grab it it is beautiful sturdy solid wood and all it needed was just a nice little scrub so that's what i'm doing here and then i'm making sure that it's very very dry although you see in the end it wasn't that dry but it, it worked out it worked out so just again gave it a scrub dry it very well and then using my Cricut I designed a decal that says fresh honey and um, some other little details so I'm just going to apply it right to the center of this cutting board. Stay that we get one chance, one. 
And you're going to see here what I'm talking about. Apparently the board was not fully dry because this decal was not sticking. And I've used this decal a lot or this vinyl and it was just not sticking. But once it was there, it kind of, you know, stuck, but it just gave me the hardest time. So I'm going to speed it up here for you because I'm sure you don't want to see me struggle with that. But just to let you know, things like this happen. You just have to take it very slowly one part at a time and it'll work out so but that's about it for this one because it was already so beautiful and in that beautiful black tone I did not want to mess with it anymore I just wanted to add something really cute and I think it turned out super adorable fresh new look and it's in my kitchen and I love it Alright, so for this next DIY, I am going to take this wooden cattle crossing sign that I found at the thrift store. I'm just going to give it a quick sand with my palm sander and a 220 grit sandpaper and then give it a really good scrub. The shape and the color of this sign reminded me of beehives, like, you know, the fresh honey that I just did. <laughs> so I decided to keep it in the honey bee theme and I'm just going to give it two coats of Rust-Oleum chalk paint in the linen white. And then using my Cricut, I cut out this um, honeycomb design that I am going to place. Now, I contemplated leaving it this color because it has that kind of golden yellowish tone. But then I decided to do something different. I like things very simple and very subtle. So once I weeded it out, I applied it to the um, board or just to the right side of it, a little bit of an angle. Now, I should have done this before I gave it its first coat, but I didn't. I thought about it later. So I, after the first coat, I let it dry and then I applied the vinyl. And then I did two coats of Rust-Oleum chalk paint on top of that. So I did cut the excess that is kind of like overflowing from the edges using an X-Acto knife. So you might be thinking, you know, why paint it? But I just, you know, I like the things that are simple and subtle. So by distressing it now using my sanding block, I'm going to pull out not just the yellow from the sign that was already there, which I thought was very appropriate for the actual theme of the sign, but also the vinyl. So I'm going very, very softly because I do not want to pull too much. Now, the camera here, it does not does it it does not do it justice. Let me tell you. You can really see that honeycomb B kind of theme you really see the texture it's just with the camera and the and the view the angle you just can't see it but it's there but using my Cricut I also cut the uh, phrase that says welcome to our hive as well as another small little bee that I'm going to place right over the honeycomb and that's it for this one I th contemplated using a rope to hang it but I just added two claw hooks on the back that way it could be hung and I just think it turned out so beautiful so fresh looking and you know the board already had that like hexagon um is it a hexagon <laughs> I don't know but you know what I'm talking about that looks like a honeycomb and I just think it just looks super cute with this and again you really can't see the texture of the decal on the right side but it's there guys and I think it turned out so beautiful For this next DIY is actually one of my favorites from today and it's this bunny this bunny is made out of wood and you can tell it was handmade but it has seen better days so I'm just going to remove the arms the bow that it has on there and anything that's on top of it and we're going to give it a fresh look After everything was removed, I am now sanding it very lightly with a 220 grit sandpaper just to smooth things out and give it a fresh um, kind of softer feel and then give it one heavy coat of Rust-Oleum chalk paint in the linen white 
And again, I'm not looking for perfection. I wanted to have a little bit of a bare areas just to kind of give it that distressed farmhouse look. The little flower pot that was actually in front of the bunny, I, I removed it and I'm just clipping off here the nails that were just still on it. And then I'm going to give it another quick sand and a two coats of with the Rust-Oleum Milk Paint, not the chalk paint, in the Highland Blue, which is absolutely stunning, guys. If you do not... Um, I love Rust-Oleum. I don't, this is not a sponsored video, but truly it is such a good quality paint. They have chalk paint. Of course, you know about their spray paint. They also have milk paint and just beautiful colors. So check them out. So once that was dry, I am now going to attach it to the right side of the bunny towards the bottom, almost like the flower pot is laying on the floor or not laying, but you know, on the floor next to the bunny. And I'm going to secure it with wood glue and a couple of brand nails. Now moving on to the tail. So before, originally, the bunny was facing forward, but this bunny, I want him to be facing backwards. Two reasons. One, I think is they just look adorable with their little bunny tails in the front. And also, I am, I'm not a good uh, like face drawer, so I wanted to avoid drawing a face, eyes, and nose. So we're just going to go with the backside here. So I'm just going to take a piece of a uh, towel from the Dollar Tree and some pillow stuffing from Walmart. And I'm just gonna start hot gluing it. I'm just trying to shape it as a ball and then attach the ball onto the backside of the bunny. I am now going to take some of these colorful florals from the Dollar Tree and I'm going to start stapling branch by branch onto the flower pot just on the top side where the flowers would be. And now I am going to take this Dollar Tree scarf and wrap it around the neck of the bunny. Originally, I did the bow towards the right side, which is right above the flowers. But later on, I did change it to the left because I just thought that right side was a little bit too heavy with the flower arrangement there. And then I'm just going to hot glue some um, Spanish moss right onto the bottom of the flowers that way you don't see the staples and it'll just look a lot more nicer and that's it guys this one turned out so adorable All right, guys, so for this next DIY, I am going to take this round plaque from the Target dollar spot. It was $3, and it's actually a pretty good size. I'm going to remove um, the jute twine, as you see me doing here, and then I am going to tape a couple of uh, spots, one on the bottom and one on the top, and then I am going to give it two coats of Rust-Oleum Milk Paint in the Highline Blue. Sailors passing on the street, are you ready for peace? Mm -hmm. Ships are filling up fast. I am now going to tape over the blue section and I am going to make a couple thicker lines. 
and I am going to stain them using Waverly Antiquing Wax and then removing them just to give it a little bit more of a stain antique look. Are filling up the sky Are you willing To try Why Sing along as they howl And be fulfilled Many more will come Many more Under the sun and I did get a little bit of bleed through on this one as well. So to fix it, I did use a wet rag to remove it and a lot of it removed. Now it was not perfect. And it was one of those moments where I just thought if I keep trying to fix it, I think I'm just going to make it worse. So I just left it as is. It's by all means is not perfect, but I think it still turned out really, really cute. Using my Cricut, I cut out the word welcome and replaced the O with a paw, which I think is super cute. And I'm going to place it towards the bottom of the sign and it's going to be a little bit of a, on a tilted kind of angle. And then I am going to make a greenery or a flower, I guess, like a little swag for the top. I'm going to use these greeneries. This is from the Target dollar spot. And then I'm going to use some baby spreads that I got at on Amazon and just to kind of add a little bit of a white tone to it. And then I'm going to join everything together using some jute twine and hot glue it to the top. Using this ribbon from the Dollar Tree, I'm going to make a very simple bow tie it in the center with some jute twine and hot glue it to the center of the floral and then I am going to take more of that same ribbon and I'm just going to cut a piece it's about maybe about 12 inches maybe 14 or so and I'm just going to loop it on the back hot glue it and that's going to be where we can hang it from and guys it is really hard to pick a favorite but I think this one might be one of my favorites I love the colors I love how fresh and crisp it looks and it's just so cute I love it why I am going to take this Dollar Tree bunny sign and remove the little bunny tails <laughs> and then I'm going to stand off most of the glitter I'm not looking for perfection I just need most of it to be um, a little bit more smoother than what it is dust it off really really well and then I am going to take uh, more of that glue from that glue stick put it all over the sign and then I'm going to use a um, stock paper that I got at Michael's and I'm just going to glue it. Now you're going to see that not all of it was covered, but I am going to then piece it together using the scrap that was left over. This welcome wooden sign I got at the Target dollar spot. I'm just going to spray paint it using Rust-Oleum spray paint in a flat white. I am now going to drill on the same area where the holes were already there, but I'm just going to make them a little bit bigger and making sure that it goes through the other side. 
I am then going to take some jute twine, add a little bit of painter's tape just so that I can thread it through the holes, knot them in the front, and then I'll have something to hang the sign from. I'm now going to attach the wooden welcome using hot glue and place it towards the bottom of the sign, giving it a little bit of a tilt. Using some Dollar Tree florals, I'm now going to make a little bundle just to hot glue it there to the right side of the sign. I'm going to join them together using some jute twine, attach it. And then we'll be done with this one, guys. Another beautiful one. It's so simple and so inexpensive. For this next DIY, I am going to start here with this Dollar Tree little chalkboard sign. I am going to give it three coats of Rust-Oleum chalk paint in the linen white, only on the chalkboard portion of it. I'm going to leave the rest in that natural wood tone. I am now going to take this wreath from the Target dollar spot. It was $3. I'm going to remove the ribbon as well as the tag and then I'm going to start separating the little branches just making it a little bit bigger. I want this wreath to have a little bit more fullness and look uh, or seem a little bit bigger. So I'm going to take these Dollar Tree leaves and I'm going to start placing them right in between the branches of the wreath, hot gluing them in place and making sure it looks as natural as possible. Using my Cricut, I cut out the phrase, it's so good to be home. I'm going to place it right in the center of the little sign. I'm going to loop this buffalo check black and white ribbon from the Dollar Tree. Just knot it and then just making sure that the knot falls towards the bottom and the back of it. That way I can hang the wreath from there. I am now going to hot glue the little sign right in the center of the wreath. Now I am just making sure that the sign falls right in it, but I want it to look like the sign has been there and this wreath is just all growing all around it. So I want it to really be snug right in between all the leaves and all the little branches. So using hot glue, I'm going to hot glue it and then I'm going to make sure that the branches and the leaves again, kind of like some of them just fall right on top of it and look as natural as possible. going to take four of these chalkboard little planks that you can find at Dollar Tree, remove the back from them, and then we are going to join them together using hot glue, making a window. 
like a little four pane window. To make it a little bit more secure, I am going to hot glue some of these extra large crafting sticks to the back where all the panes join. And now I am going to give it three coats of Rust-Oleum Chalk Band and the Linen White. I am now going to create a very simple but very spring-like beautiful wreath using this wreath form from Amazon. Now I know Dollar Tree carries them as well, the smaller kind. And I'm just going to take some of these flowers from the Dollar Tree and I'm going to start placing them kind of like just very natural looking. I'm going to take some yellow ones and some uh, white ones and um, just start placing them towards the right side of the wreath a little bit fuller on the top than on the bottom. I am then going to take some of this beautiful ribbon from the Dollar Tree and make a very simple bow and hot glue it to the center. I am now going to hot glue the wreath right in the center of the window and then I'm going to add some jute twine to the back of the window so that I can hang it on the wall. And that's it for this one guys. I think this one is so beautiful. I love how bright and airy it is. I love that I didn't distress the window. I kept it pure white and it just looks so stunning. For this next DIY, I am going to take this box signed from the Dollar Tree, remove, of course, the plastic covering, and then I'm also going to remove the black border from the front. I'm going to sand down just a little bit the residual glue as well as any paper that kind of lifted up. Now I am going to place some wood stick glue onto the front and I am going to resurface it with crafting paper from Michaels. Now I'm just going to wrap it around to the sides. So I'm just going to make some slits and then start folding up and gluing the sides onto the box.
I am now going to take this little jar. It almost looks like a chemistry kind of little jar. I found these at Michael's and they were on sale for a dollar and I just thought they were so cute. I'm going to use one of them here. And I'm just going to mark and make holes right where I need to place some jute twine so that I can uh, tie it around the jar. Now I am going to hot glue the jar as well to make sure that it is safe and is not going to fall. I don't think the jute twine itself is going to be strong enough to hold it. So I'm going to hot glue it as well. And I'm just going to tie it in the front with a very simple bow. To finish it off, I'm going to add some of these beautiful flowers from the Dollar Tree and call it a day. This one is so cute, so simple, and yet so fresh looking. I think two of these will look beautiful as a set. For this next DIY, I'm going to use this Target Dollar Spot window, remove the backing from it as well as any hardware. I am now going to take two rulers from the Dollar Tree, remove the black portion, uh, the part that has the numbers on it, and now I'm going to start measuring how long I need to cut these. So I'm just going to eye it out, but pretty much it's about uh, just a few centimeters off of what the window measures. Using the miter, miter box, I make the cuts, and now I am going to hot glue and make a little flower box in front of the window. So I'm just going to place shorter ones on the sides and then the longer ones in the front. For the bottom, I am going to trace on top of a, a foam board from the Dollar Tree the box, and then I'm going to cut using the X-Acto knife, and then I'm going to hot glue the window right on top of the foam board. And now it's time to place some flowers and because it is foam board on the bottom, I can actually just press them right in and they stay sticking up, which is perfect. Some of these flowers are from Amazon, like the boxwood, and then some of them, the white ones are from Dollar Tree. And to finish it off, I'm going to add a tag that says happy spring right on the front. And that's it for this one, guys. Another beautiful one. So fresh looking. I love it. All right, for this next DIY, I am going to take this leftover canvas frame from the Dollar Tree and I'm going to stain it using Waverly Antiquing Wax.
Once the stain was fully dry, I'm now going to do a heavy dry brush of Rust-Oleum Chalk Paint in the Linen White. I am now going to take this metal flower from the Dollar Tree, remove the stem from it because I'm only going to need the flower portion of it. And then I am going to give it one good coat of bare paint in the Mossy Bench. This is by far one of my favorite colors and it's by Bear. It's called Mossy Bench and it is beautiful. I'm going to take some white paint from Rustoleum, the linen white, and I'm just going to trace the center of it so that it is um, nicely white there in the center. These green leaves are from the Dollar General. I'm just going to hot glue one going up, the other one going to the side on the bottom right corner of the frame and then I'm going to hot glue the flower right in that corner and that's it for this one guys another very simple one but so fresh looking and is so adorable I love that the green and the mossy bench like that teal color just kind of kind of blend together in a very contrast way which is so weird but I just love the way the combination looks use this tin bucket from the Target dollar spot. I'm going to re remove the handle from it and then give the bottom portion of it, except for maybe one inch on the top, two coats of Rust-Oleum chalk paint in the linen white. I am now going to take this fabric that I get at Walmart. They come in little bundles and I'm just going to cut a piece of it. I'm going to make a liner for the inside of the tin bucket. Now I did the same thing on my last project that I created a liner for and I made it too short so I did have to patch it up in the end. But what I'm doing here is I'm creating a seam. So I'm just going to hot glue and fold about a half inch down so that way it creates a nice seam. I'm going to place it inside and fold it outwards and then hot glue it in place so that it does not move on me. And like I said, I cut it way too short so I had to do a smaller one to patch it up in the back. Once I get this all set up, I'm just going to place some florals inside and that's it for this one. Another such an easy one but truly beautiful way to use this teen buckets that we know we can find so many places like Dollar Tree as well. And imagine having several of these lined up together. I think that would look beautiful. Take a step into the river. Get down on your knees. Come to the mountain. We'll take it in the view. You will find the life is greater than you knew when you go. All right, friends, for this next DIY, I am going to use this canvas frame sign from the Dollar Tree, and I'm going to give it two coats of Rust-Oleum Chalk Paint in the Linen White. I am now going to take this round brush. It's like a waxing brush, and I'm just going to make stripes going down about maybe 
an inch and a half to two inches apart from each other. Now this gray is by Rustoleum Chalk Paint and it's their country gray. I am now going to take this decal from the Dollar Tree. I've already used a portion of it, but I'm going to use another portion of it and place it right on the right side towards the bottom of the canvas, and that's it. <laughs> Does it get any easier than this, guys? Seriously, so easy and so cute. I love the way this one turned out. I love the gray, white, and black combination, and then that pink flower just topped it off. For this next DIY, I am going to take these three terracotta pots from the Dollar Tree and give them one coat of the bare mossy bench paint. I am now going to take this French script stencil that I purchased on Amazon quite a bit ago and I'm just going to start kind of stenciling it but almost dry brushing it. I just want this to be very faint and I'm going to stencil this very randomly in different areas of each pot. That way it looks like it's been there for a while and it's kind of faded through the years. Now I'm going to take some jute twine and I'm going to wrap it around three times, make a simple bow in the front. Just make sure that if you're going to recreate something like this, that you are tying the bow in the area where you really want that pot to shine. So just find the best area that is stenciled and then make the bow there. And I did the same thing on the other two pots. Once I was done with the third one, I just added some florals and that's it for this one, guys. Another beautiful, easy one and so cute. I just love that blue color. That teal color is just gorgeous. For this next DIY, I am going to take this little container from the Dollar Tree. It's in their party section and comes two in a pack. And I'm going to give it three coats of Rust-Oleum chalk paint in the linen white. I'm now going to take a sponge applicator and some Waverly chalk paint in the ink and I am going to just start making V's kind of like the shape of a V all around the top rim 
and then one more line underneath that one. I've been thinking about my options, every detail in my head, but it doesn't really matter, nothing matters, so I cry instead. When I was done doing the second row, I was done, guys. Again, these are so easy, guys. Anyone can make. Truly no skill required. It's just so beautiful. This little container looks like it came from a high-end store, and I love it. really large uh, painter sticks not painter sticks you know those paint stirring sticks that you can get at the hardware store I get mine at Amazon because you get a whole ton like a whole box and it always equals to about the same and as, as if you bought it at the hardware store but if you have a hardware store near you they are three in a pack and for me they cost me 98 98 cents which is not bad at all I'm going to place them all facing down so the ruler portion down and next to each other just like this. I'm using a square to keep them nice and even and then I marked uh, kind of like a triangle so I just want to make like a house. So I'm just going to mark with the pencil. I use my miter saw to cut them and then the pieces that are left over, the scrap pieces, I'm just going to hot glue them to the back to secure the house together. I'm just going to lightly sand the house. This is just to smooth it out. Any uh, splinters that may be around just for them to be smoothed out. And now I am going to dry brush some Rust-Oleum chalk paint in the linen white. And I am going to just almost like a heavy dry brush. But I just wanted to have a distressed look. But instead of painting it all and then distressing it, I'm just going to keep adding dry, brush, dry brushed paint until I like the look. If you followed me for a while, you know that I have had this stencil for a while and I love using it. It's a French script stencil that I got on Amazon. I really love it. And anytime I use it, I use it to kind of make it look like an item has been around for a while and the script has kind of faded. So I'm just going to stencil it and just kind of make it look random, but also like it's been around and it's faded through the years. I am now going to take this greenery. I believe this was from Dollar General and I'm just going to pull some of the leaves apart and I'm just going to start hot gluing them on the bottom right, kind of, kind of going upwards. So it's just going to look like some greenery, some plants have been growing on this house and I want it to look like it's one big, um, kind of like ivy, you know, just kind of one big branch just growing onto the house.
Using this jute twine that I get at Walmart, I'm just going to wrap it around a few times and tie it in a knot in the front. Now I'm going to take this thinner jute twine that um, I actually got, uh, let's see, I think this was the one I got from Casey at Coffee with My Sunshine during my Amazon box challenge. So I'm just going to use it um, and I'm going to tie it here after I threaded three beads. I'm just going to tie it a knot and then that way the beads won't fall off. And then I'm going to wrap it around just once around the house and then cut it and add three more beads at the other end and then just attach it to the same knot. And that's it for this one, guys. Such a beautiful one. I love the way this looks and I love that it's such a tall, like good size house. For this next DIY, I'm going to take two of these terracotta pots from the Dollar Tree. I end up using three. But at first, I'm going to start here with two. I'm going to use E6000 as well as hot glue and join them together. At first, I thought I would just use some of the spackle and fill in the crack to just so you don't really tell that it's joined. But this really didn't work out, so I end up just adding something else here in a minute. I'll show you. But just to show you all the steps that I took, I did take some spackle and just filled in the crack. I then took a little bit more spackle, and I'm going to make the same kind of mixture that I did earlier for the vase. This time, I'm going to use some Waverly chalk paint in their agave color, which is beautiful. And then I'm just going to start painting it. Now, this one is going to have a very ceramic kind of texture to it. But I'm going to try to have the least amount of brush strokes. So I want it to be smooth, but then again, very textured. It's going to be very rough. And I'm going to do that all over the two vases, as well as a third one that I'm going to paint. And I did the inside of each vase as well. To cover that middle section, I'm just going to start adding some of this white jute twine that I got at Walmart. I never knew that there was white jute twine and I love it. I'm kind of obsessed with it now. <laughs> so I'm just going to start hot gluing. I'm going to start about an inch and a half from the center and I'm going to end about an inch and a half on the other terracotta pot. And I'm just going to start wrapping it. At first I wanted it to be very lined up and then I thought, you know what? No, I'm just going to start just wrapping it. You know, and even overlapping it, and they just gave it a little bit of more fullness, and I think it looked even better. Now, on the smaller vase, 
I am going to then just add the white jute twine on the top rim. And that's it for this one, guys. I'm just going to add some florals from the Dollar Tree. Stand. I recently thrifted this at Goodwill and the color just reminds me so much of bees like I don't understand I've never been into bees and then all of a sudden like I've been finding all these like yellow tone items and I just want to flip them into a bee themed um, decor so we're going to give it a uh, several coats of dry brushed chalk paint from Rustolian in the linen white and when I mean several coats I mean like I gave this thing like 12 <laughs> coats I know it's crazy because it was very very dry brushed I wanted to have a lot of texture I was moving the brush in all directions that way everything was just very that's all I can think of is just textured and I left it somewhat um, see-through so you still see a little bit of the yellow but I also distressed the corners so that you can see the yellow pop through Then using my Cricut, I cut out this design. I bought this from Cricut Design Space and it had like a three part. So this one here is the honeycomb. I'm just gonna place it towards the right side of the cake stand. It's gonna overflow to the sides. I'm okay with that. Then I'm gonna cut off the excess using the X-Acto knife. It also had a bee kind phrase as well as a bee and I just placed them towards the top. And then to finish it off, I just sealed everything using polycrylic and yeah, that's it. Because it's gonna be a cake stand, I really wanna make sure that if, if anything spills on it, that um, it's gonna be safe. But um, that's it for this one, guys. I think the transformation is so beautiful. It could be used as a decor item, as well as a cake stand, and I think it's stunning. planter that we already had here at home as a matter of fact we thought about taking it to the thrift store and i said nope i'm gonna give it a new look the shape and the texture that this um, jar or not jar vase has reminded me of water of the ocean so i wanted to give it a very like tropical kind of like the ocean and the islands would look like so i'm going to start with one coat of rustoleum chalk paint in the coastal blue Once that was dry, I'm now going to take this 
Waverly chalk paint and the agave and I'm just gonna dry brush and again I did this probably for about 10 minutes because I just wanted to kind of take the time and I was actually really enjoying it It was very therapeutic just brushing it here and there until I saw exactly what I want it to look like I then took it outside and using this chalked rustoleum matte clear top coat i'm just going to spray it let it dry and that way it's not going to have a glossy finish to it but it's still going to be protected and i love the way this planter turned out it has such a tropical feel i love that it kind of resembles the ocean and i think it's just beautiful So for this DIY, we're going to start with one of these garden little fences. You have seen them. I'm sure you have. <laughs> so many DIYers are using them. But you know what? I have never done anything with them. So this is my very first time working with them. So as you see here, I am using wire cutters to cut off two of the four pieces off of it. And then I'm going to trim off anything that is just extra to the sides as well as these stakes. Once I have everything as smooth as possible to the base of the fence, I'm just going to give it one coat of Rust-Oleum chalk paint in the linen white. I don't want full coverage. I want it to look a little bit distressed. I'm not going to take these florals from Dollar General. I'm just going to place one facing to each side and then join them together using some jute twine from uh, Walmart. And then I am going to kind of mark where they will fall, like where I'm going to glue them. Now I'm going to take these little tiny mini glass containers from the Dollar Tree. I'm going to use three of them, remove the caps, and then I'm going to hot glue them one in each middle section of the fence. I'm going to flip it over and I'm just going to use some of this white jute twine and I'm just going to tie it around the little jars. That way it just adds a little bit more security because these are made of glass and if they fall they will shatter. And now I'm going to hot glue the florals right in the center there and then going to tie each side using some of that same white jute twine to make sure that it's not going to fall.
I'm going to take more of that regular natural jute twine and I am going to just tie it on each side towards the top and just in making sure that I leave enough to hang the what I'm going to call wreath <laughs> or wall decor and um, just enough where where I want to see it. Now I'm going to take these lavender faux florals and I got these I want to say it was at Walmart maybe or I, I honestly don't remember but they're beautiful. I have several bundles. I'm going to cut three little branches and just stick them right in the little jars and that's it for this one guys. Such an easy beautiful really 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 cool looking either wreath or wall decor and I think it will look good in any space. For this next DIY, I am going to take this cocoa liner from the Dollar Tree and I'm just going to start pulling some of it apart. I'm going to take this wreath form from the Dollar Tree and I'm going to start placing some of these green leaves for also from the Dollar Tree onto the right side of the wreath making the upper portion just a little bit more fuller and to make it a little bit fuller I'm also going to use some magnolia leaves from the Dollar General just to add again a little bit more fullness to the greenery. I'm going to take some of that cocoa liners and I'm just going to start threading it right in between everything. Here at this point, I'm just I just want it in there and then I'll start switching it or moving it as I see that I want or where I want it kind of thing. And then I'm going to take this floral or this flower from the Target Dollar Spot. I'm going to remove the stem and I'm just going to hot glue it towards the top portion right underneath the fuller or the top portion of the greenery. I'm going to take this cute little bee from the Dollar Tree, remove the welcome portion of it, and I'm just going to give it a little bit of a freshen up paint job here. I don't I don't mind the teal color, but I just want it to have more white. So I am going to just freshen up the white and the black portions of the bee. And now I am going to place the bee right underneath the flower. I did remove one of those magnolia leaves temporarily to make sure that the bee is where I want it to be. And then I'm going to place the magnolia leaf right underneath that bee and call it a day, guys. This one is so stinking cute. I love how neutral it is, but how that yellow just pops from the bee. And I think it just looks so cute. tree eggs these are the ones that are a little bit on the larger side so not the smaller ones I'm going to remove or just kind of separate them and then I'm going to take my drill and just drill a few holes right on the larger half of the egg and then I'm going to use those holes so that I can start cutting off the top portion of the egg and I'm going to cut it in a zigzag motion or shape I should say that way it looks like the crack the crack 
the egg has been cracked. There we go. And um, it's, it's just the eggshell left. Now I'm going to take my wood burning tool and I'm just going to start melting that middle section. I want to seal that middle section so that the two halves of the eggs do not come apart. And then I'm also going to melt just a little bit of the top just to make sure that there are not any like too sharp of areas where it would scratch anybody. Get down on your knees, come to the mountain. And then I am going to use some hot glue and just place like a little circle on the bottom of each. This is just to create a little bit of a lip so that the eggs can then stand. I am now going to give each egg two coats of Rosolium chalk paint in the linen white as well as the top inside of each egg. I'm going to take this oval wooden plaque from the Dollar Tree and I'm going to give the edges two coats of Rustoleum chalk bean and the linen white. It's going to be about two inches in um, towards the center of the plaque. And once it was dry, I am going to add some hot glue and some green moss from the Dollar Tree. I am now going to add some Spanish moss inside of each egg. That way it looks like a little nest. And then I'm going to add some florals from the Dollar Tree in the pink, white, and purple. And now I'm going to hot glue each egg onto the moss and just placing them kind of like in a V kind of shape. And then I'm going to add some um, leftover greenery that I have from other florals. And I'm just going to add it to towards the center of the arrangement. That way it just adds a little bit of a contrast green there in the center. And that's it for this one. Oh, it's beautiful, colorful, but yeah, very bright and airy Easter decor or even just for the whole springtime. I would love to connect with you in my Instagram account. So if you have a page yourself, check out the link down in the description box. I post daily, multiple times a day, and I'd love to connect with you there as well. All right, so for this DIY, I am going to take something that I already had on hand. This is a tin planter that I thrifted about a year ago. And I, as you can see, I already had stenciled a farmer's market stencil there. I did that for last spring, but I just wanted to give it a new look, a fresh new style. So I'm going to give the planter two coats of the Waverly uh, chalk paint, and this is in their moss. I am then going to take more of that white jute twine and wrap it around five times, making a very simple knot in the front. I'm 
I'm now going to take this burlap with uh, some lace ribbon from the Dollar Tree, make a very simple bow, and hot glue it right on top of that knot. And now I'm going to take these white florals from the Dollar Tree and just start placing them sparingly here and there within the greenery that was already in the planter. Now, this is one of the most realistic looking greeneries I have ever seen. It's faux, it's not real, but it is just so soft and so real looking and I love it. And I know I am biased because I am the one who created it, but I think this is one of the best floral arrangements I have ever done. <laughs> <laughs> I know it sounds a little cocky, right? But I just really love the way it looked. It's so fresh looking and I really, really love it. lantern that I thrifted for $4.99 guys I was so thrilled it's actually a really good size I removed the faux candle because it was not working it was rusted I even placed new batteries just not working I also re uh, removed the glass from all three panels I just don't like having glass in my home for my decor and this is really true glass so I just removed them I gave everything a good scrub and then I spray painted it with rustoleum flat white paint a couple of coats is all that it needed i just wanted to make sure that it was fully covered but also not perfect because i did want it to have a little bit of a distressed look once it was dry i then took it inside and now i'm going to just add a little bit of a rusted look to it i'm going to add antiquing wax by waverly I'm just going to start adding it on the like edges anywhere where metal and metal meet where it just makes it look like it's just rusted through the years Once I was done rusting it, I basically just added several sunflowers that I got at the Dollar General just to add a little bit more of a spring tone to it. And guys, this lantern turned out absolutely beautiful. What a great find. All right, for this next DIY, I am going to take this uh, wood frame that I got at the thrift store as well, and I am going to give it several coats of Rust-Oleum chalk paint in the linen white. I did a uh, about three coats, and I did them in different directions because I want this to have a nice texture to it, almost like a canvas. All right, so now I am going to start freehanding my own art. I always get so nervous when I do this. I don't do it all the time. But if you follow me for a while, you know that every so often I like to create my own artwork. And so here I am. I'm just using several different um, chalk paints and a little bit of 
um, Waverly Antiquing Wax. And I'm just going to start freehanding a nice, beautiful, summer-like art. And uh, I'm just going to let you watch while I do it. I find it very relaxing. I hope you do too. And um, let's see how it turns out at the end. all right friends so we're just about done here i'm just adding some last few details let me know what you think down in the comments i get so nervous but i really love the way it turned out and what a difference from what it looked like before wow All right, for this next DIY, I'm going to take this box and I'm going to remove the little flamingo that's in the front. Now that I don't like it, it's just not quite my style. I'm gonna sand it down just a little bit and then I'm going to give everything three coats of, not no three coats, two coats of Rust-Oleum chalk paint and the linen white. And then in the front, only the middle uh, little plank is gonna be white and then the other two are going to be blue using Rust-Oleum chalk paint in the coastal blue. I'm just going to detail the little edges and making sure that it just looks nicely finished as well as in between the planks. I am now going to make a little flower arrangement. These are just some leaves and flowers from the Dollar Tree. I am going to place them together and join them using jute twine and hot glue it to the front to cover up a little bit of that excess glue that was kept on the box. All right, so once I hot glue it here, guys, we'll be done with this one. And what a beautiful transformation this box took. Wow. I love it with these towels right in it.
For this DIY, we're going to start with these random pieces of scrap wood and signs and spindles. That spindle was from a leftover table that I DIY'd something with. These are just leftover boards and this is a Dollar Tree sign. We're all going to use them to build a little garden toolbox that could be a planter as well. So I'm going to start by taking off this little, just these end parts of the spindle because I will not need them. I am using my miter saw, but you can certainly use a miter box with a miter saw and or a hand saw, and it should be fine, but this is a little bit more of a hardwood, so I'm using my miter saw. I'm not going to take the spindle, and I am going to use it as a measurement guide to trim off some of this scrap wood that's going to eventually be the bottom of the um, let's call it a toolbox, <laughs> the bottom of a toolbox. And um, so I want everything to be the same size. And then I'm going to use this part and cut two pieces of this one by three that I had here at home already. And if you see the lights going in and out, guys, it's because my my light is a censored light in the garage and it keeps going on and off. So don't mind the lighting. But um, anyways, I'm going to cut two of these. All right, so now I'm going to remove everything from this sign, including the that part, the part that's kind of peeling. It's so much easier to peel it off than to paint or that to sand off the glitter and paint over it, so much easier. Now I'm gonna use the, the piece of scrap wood here that's gonna be the bottom of the toolbox as a guide to know how wide I am going to cut because I'm gonna use this sign to make two sides for the toolbox. So I'm just going to score it using my blade knife and then I am going to just pretty much break it off and then sand it down so that it is smooth and I'm going to make two of these. Take a step into the river and get down on your knees. Come to the mountain. We'll take it in. And here I'm just marking five inches into the each or each board and that way I have a guide on where because I'm going to cut angles on each side and um, that way I know where to cut and then I am going to use the spindle to um, use as a guide to know kind of where the center will be and then where I want to start that angle cut. I am now going to sand just lightly everything so it's nicely smooth and then we can start building things and putting things together. I'm going to use wood glue as well as brad nails to put this toolbox together. So I am just going to place the, of course, the bottom part right on the bottom and then I'm going to place wood glue on each side and that's where the one by threes are going to go and then I'm going to secure them using a half inch brad nails and my Ryobi brad nails. Now I know, or oh, brad nailer. I know not everyone is used to working with power tools. I highly recommend them as long as it's safe and you can afford them. The Ryobi brands are not that expensive. And what I like about them is just you can make so many things very inexpensively and it makes life a lot easier, but it's not necessary. You can certainly use a nail and hammer and it'll get the job done. Now I'm going to use more wood glue and the same brad nails and I'm going to place the sides on each side. You're broken and you're shattered. And of course, if you are going to be using power tools, always, always be safe. Read all instructions and safety guidelines and wear safety gear as needed. You pick up the pieces and you let the bridges burn. So come to the water. So you can see how the toolbox is coming together. Now I'm going to place the spindle right on top and again secure it with wood glue and brad nails. Go through the storm. I will hold you, keep 
And now everything's going to come together when I give it two coats over Stolium Chalk Paint and the Linen White. After everything was dry, I'm going to lightly sand off just a little bit of the edges. That way it'll have a little bit more of a farmhouse look. And then I am going to dust it off really, really well and add a decal that I created using my Cricut. That's just this garden. Um, that way it can be used either as a planter for the garden or it can be used indoors too with some fl uh, faux florals. Uh, but either way, I think it would look super, super cute. I'm going to add some of these faux grassy florals that I get on Amazon. I already had them on hand and some sunflowers from the Dollar General. Um, I already used them for another DIY and I had these left over. So I'm just going to place them right in. And I think this planter toolbox turned out absolutely adorable. I love the way it turned out. That spindle just literally makes this planter. I love it. So come to the water where you will find Phoebe. Take a step into the river and get down on your knees. All right, so for this next DIY, I'm going to take more of those or that one by three that I used earlier. I cut four pieces. Two of them are about 12 inches, maybe 14. <laughs> I really didn't measure that much. And then the other one is about 18 to 20 inches, something like that. But I am going to make a full little window here. So I sanded them down and then I am staining them using the chalked antiquing wax. It's like a glaze and this is like their gray tone. So it just gives it a very antique-ish kind of grayish tone and I really like it. Once it was dry, I am going to put things together just like you see here. And I am going to use again wood glue, but this time I'm going to use some staples. That way it gives you an option if you want to recreate this at home. Most of you I know have staplers. Um, if you have a heavier duty, like more industrial stapler, it works even better. I'm just going to literally staple in each seam <laughs> and I'm going to do this on each side, each end, as well as the edges. Now I am going to take this wreath from the Target dollar spot. It was only $3 and I think it's stunning. I'm gonna remove everything from it. I'm just gonna add a few little florals here from the Dollar Tree just to fill it up and add a little bit more of that white tone that I love. I'm not gonna add a lot of wood glue, not wood glue, hot glue, because I don't want it to, to drip. You know, I want it to be, it doesn't need much hot glue, um, but I just, don't want a lot of hot glue showing so I did thread through the leaves from the wreath in and out of the florals that way just hide any glue that may be seen and um, that way it's just it's just smoother and it just looks nicer and once I had that done I am now going to place some ribbon from the Dollar General and I am going to just place a very small amount and I'm going to just loop it around 
Then I'm going to flip it over and you're going to see here in a minute. I'm going to staple it kind of like upside down. So when it flips over to the right side, it's hiding those staples and you'll see what I'm talking about here. And just like that. And you can add a claw hook on the back, but this time I didn't need it because you just hang it right behind there. The ribbon will cover the nail. But look how beautiful this looks. It looks so high end. I think it, you can find something like this literally at any store. And I just love the way it turned out well, for only a few dollars. The one by three guys is only about four dollars and the wreath was three. I mean, think about it. That's so inexpensive. Next DIY, I'm going to use this Dollar Tree wooden flower and I am going to trace it on this craft paper that I got at Michael's. Then I am going to cut it to size and glue it using wood stick, not wood stick, glue stick. <laughs> Here I'm just making sure that nothing is um, lifted up, that everything is flat, and that any excess glue would um, be out. And then I'm going to use my X-Acto knife just to make sure that the outside details like the edges are nicely cut and trimmed. After that, we are going to add some tiny little legs just using these wood beads. This is going to be like a decor riser where you can place florals or a vase or whatever you'd like to use it for. But I think it turned out absolutely adorable. I love the gold tone of the um, craft paper. Dollar General tag that I got a long time ago. I have used them over and over again. They were on sale for like 75 cents. I removed the pumpkin that was on it as well as the rope. And then I'm going to take this Dollar Tree napkin that is in their party section. I marked where the little round circle is and I'm just going to start cutting it using my X-Acto knife. This is a two ply napkin, so I'm going to remove the back portion of it. That way it's nicely thin. And using some Mod Podge, I am going to place Mod Podge all over the tag as well as the top of the napkin after I have placed it and make sure that it's where I want it to be. Using my sanding block, I'm just going to sand off the excess napkin that is on the edges. And I think it just adds a little bit more of a little tiny distress on the edges, which is really cool looking. Once I have that there, it's time to place some florals. These are from the Dollar Tree. I'm going to keep it very simple. I'm going to take a couple of them, wrap the stems with some jute twine and hot glue it to the bottom.
I am going to place that rope that it came with originally back on it, knot it where it was knotted, and then that's it, guys. This one turned out so cute. I think it would look great hanging or even placed in a console table or a mantle, and it's just beautiful. For this next DIY, it's going to be another very, very simple one. I'm going to use one of these flat canvases from the Dollar Tree and then one of these leftover fence, garden fence that the Dollar Tree carries. I recently made a wreath um, with half of it. So this is the remaining part of it. And I know everyone is using these fences, but hey, I had this one left over, so why not? So I'm going to cut out just one of those rounded sides and just make sure that I cut off any excess fence that is on it and make it as smooth as possible. Then I'm just going to place some hot glue on the back and place it right on top of the canvas. I'm going to make a very simple floor arrangement. I'm going to take these two leaf picks from Amazon and I am going to just tie them and join them together using jute twine, hot glue it to the bottom, and then I'm going to take a leftover sunflower from the Dollar General, place it right on the center, and then I'm going to place some jute twine on the back to be able to hang it, and that's it. <laughs> it does not get easier than this, guys. Truly, so, so easy. Take a step into the river and get down on your knees. Come to the mountain, we'll take it in the view. You will find the life is greater than you knew. When you go through the storm, I will hold you, keep you warm. When you stay. For this next DIY, I'm going to take more of these wooden beads and I'm going to thread a total of 24 beads. I am going to make some napkin um, holders, some nap napkin rings. And um, instead of threading and then threading again, I'm just going to thread all the beads that I need for all four of my napkin rings and then just separate them as I need them. So I'm going to, this is some white jute twine that I got again also on Amazon. Actually, no, this one is from Walmart. And I'm just going to tie it. So I'm just going to make little tiny rings. But I'm going to leave about an inch and a half of jute twine, as you can see. Because we're going to place this little flowers from Dollar Tree. And just, again, with jute twine, just wrap it around that area where there was no beads. So the little space in between the beads, this is where I'm wrapping the floor arrangements. And I did the same thing with all four of them. And look how adorable these look. Oh my gosh. I love the way these turned out. I am so going to make more of these. Imagine doing this for every season. I think it looks stunning. This is going to be another simple, very easy DIY. I'm going to take these pages from a book from the Dollar Tree and I am going to just roll them and then I am going to tie some jute twine around and I'm going to make three of these. I am then going to take this greenery. This is uh, like a faux lavender and the, these um, leftover greenery. I don't know where it's from. I'm going to join them together again using some jute twine. And then I am going to take one of the Dollar Tree jars and I'm going to hot glue it, the arrangement at an angle. And then I'm going to wrap it with some more jute twine. Do you know how much I love you? You put my favorite song on. I put my feet up. 
And then once I'm done, I'm just going to place those rolled up book pages right inside and it turns into this beautiful little flower arrangement that I think looks so fresh and so cute. For this next DIY, I'm going to take this leftover burlap fabric from burlapfabric.com. I'm going to cut out just some of it so that I have more of a rectangle shape. And then I'm going to hot glue it, creating a pocket. So I'm going to hot glue the side as well as the bottom. I'm sure you've seen me using this stencil before. This is a French script stencil that I got on Amazon. I'm going to start stenciling randomly all over the little pocket. And I do have this stencil in my Amazon store as well, guys. I am going to place a uh, plastic bag just inside of it just to create a little fullness. I'm going to take two more of those book pages from earlier. I'm going to scrunch them up and I'm going to place them on the top and then I'm going to tie it with some jute twine to create like a little baggie, like a little sack. And I think it turned out so adorable. I love, love, love this one because I just like the simplicity. I like the color tones it has and I think it just looks great in any mantle or decor. All right, for this next DIY, I am going to take this thrifted bamboo mat and one of these Dollar Tree vases, and I'm going to just wrap it with this um, mat. So I'm going to cut what I need and then hot glue it in about three or four places to secure it and then cut any excess mat from both the top and the bottom. I am now going to take this Dollar Tree lace ribbon and I'm just going to tie it on in the middle and make a very simple bow. And that's it guys. I'm going to add a floral or a flower from the Target Dollar Spot. And that's it. Such a beautiful vase. So unique. And it has like a tropical feel to it, doesn't it? All right, guys, so now on to the unusual wreath. I am going to take this thrifted basket that I actually painted um, a while ago. Oh, my gosh. And then I'm going to take this coconut liner from the Dollar Tree. I pulled it apart from one of those, you know, like cocoa liners that the Dollar Tree sells in the spring. And I'm going to now kind of turn it and twist it to make it look like a little bird's nest. And then I'm going to hot glue it to the bottom of the basket.
I am now going to take these branches from a Dollar General pick that I got. Um, I think it was at the end of their Christmas season. I don't know why they had them in the Christmas season, but I just think they look springy and green, so I'm going to use them. And I'm just going to start placing them uh, where I see fit. So I think it turned out being like maybe three on one side and two on the other. What I try to keep in mind when I'm creating wreaths is to make it look very natural. I like when things look like they've just been around in nature and it's just not perfect, but it just looks, I don't know, I guess just the best word to describe is very natural. So now I'm going to take these flowers from the Dollar Tree and I am going to just place them. Again, just start eyeing them out, placing them where I think it will look nice and very natural to the shape of the wreath as well as around the birth mat. I am now going to take the welcome portion of this B sign from the Dollar Tree. I'm going to remove the B as well as the rounded hanging portion of it. And then I'm going to hot glue it to the front of the wreath. Now I'm going to take three of those wooden beads and I'm going to use them as little eggs. I'm going to try to hide the little hole where you can't see it. But don't they look super adorable? This is probably my favorite part of the whole wreath is these little tiny eggs inside this bird's nest. So stinking cute. To finish it off, I'm going to add some more of that Dollar Tree lace ribbon. I'm going to thread it through the handles to make sure that they're nicely secure in there. And then uh, that's it. We're done with this one. I love this wreath. I wish I can keep it. I'm not going to keep it because I already have something for, for my wreath front door decor. And I'm going to sell this one. But gosh, I think it turned out so adorable. So cute. All right, guys, so this is it for today. I know there's a lot of spring inspiration in this video, but let me know in the comments which one stood out to you the most or which one you'd like to try. If you're visiting my channel for the first time, I hope you consider subscribing and joining our YouTube family. And if you are returning, thank you so much for coming back. I'm going to have a playlist here with tons more of mega videos for you. Check it out. I'll see you later, guys, and have a blessed day. Bye.